Okay, without further ado, we start with the first presentation, and that will be the keynote from Radovan Kopecek. This so, hello everyone. My name is Radovan Kopecek from ISC Constance, and I'm welcoming you to the second day of uh, the bifacial workshop from Tying News. Thank you, Michael and Shravan, for having me. And Michael asked me to prepare some news in the bifacial uh, solar world, which I did. And I call it now entering the bifacial NPV era, because as we know, Perk is the king, and N type uh, silicon solar cells and modules will become imperial. And in this session, we will have. Uh, reports on that from uh, solar cell and module manufacturers. In addition, we will have also some reports about simulations of bifacial uh, systems from PV case. So let me start with one motivating slide. And uh, there are many projections out there about the growth of the PV market. And now uh, also Longi and uh, Bloomberg are uh, saying that we will enter a one terawatt market before 2030 with a very simple formula, which Pierre Verlinden was already preaching for a long time, that the installed PV capacity doubles at least. You can see that it's sometimes even more, and in average it's uh, more. It doubles at least every three years. And if you make the projections, then you can actually see that we will enter a one terawatt market even before 2030. And very important is then also to develop new modules, which are, let's say, more stable, more efficient, and more bifacial. And this is what the presentation will be about. I will tell you only uh, one slide about ISC Constance, then, uh, give a review about bifacial technology and then also will focus on bifacial PV deployment. And uh, Michael asked me to show some uh, pictures about installations where bifaciality makes a lot of sense or where bifacial does not make sense at the moment. And uh, I will end up with a, with a summary. So ISC Constance, we are a non-profit uh, organization founded in 2005, and we are now 60 people going uh, fast now uh, to, I think in one year we will be about 70. So we will expand in future and we are involved in the R&D of crystalline solar cells and technology transfer of PERC, TOPCON, and N-type IBC. So biofacial technology, we had a bifacial workshop this year, March 31, April 1st. And it was very nice again to meet all the bifacial believers and uh, the community is getting bigger and bigger and it was great to meet face to face. And uh, we also celebrated the one terawatt party at ISC Constance because uh, the world, uh, the manufacturers installed one terawatt uh, total cumulated PV systems, I believe, mid of March. So, still keeping the momentum, we will organize a next bifacial workshop in Ankara uh, together with Kalion. And there you have also the possibility to look at the vertical integrated 1.2 gigawatt factory from Kalion. And if you want to stay until Saturday, then you can also go to Kara Pinar, but this is optional. The beefy workshop will be October 1922 in Ankara, and there we will discuss new innovations on cell module level system and also talk about simulations. So as you know, bifacial work is the king of energy markets. The learning curve was going down for a long time. Now it uh, increased a bit because, as you know, we are in the polysilicon crisis. So tenders at one cent per kilowatt hour at the moment are, are not possible, but we will get, get there again. So the prices will drop 
this is uh, what we are sure about. And here you can see the vertical integrated factory it starts with ingot wafers. What is very important to be independent on wafer supply is that you have your own uh, ingot crystallization and, and wafering. And then you can also still remain with G1, go to M10, whatever you like. And uh, so Kalion has also a perk, bifacial perk production on G1 and M10, and uh, also module production. And on this slide, you can see why bifacial PV actually had a big breakthrough is because these white reflectors on the rear side, because even if you have bifacial modules, you don't cannibalize the front side power. And that's why it was possible for bifacial PV to come into the uh, PV market with a high impact. So this is the 1.3 gigawatt bifacial horizontal signals axis tracking bifacial perk field at the moment. I think it's at 800 megawatt. The question is, how is it possible to come close to one cent per kilowatt hour? And uh, of course, if you look at the modules more than 10 years ago, and uh, from today, there are many changes. So the development has been done not only on, on cell level, but also very much on the module level, also to keep PERC longer in the market. You have half cells, half cut cells, you have larger wafer formats, and of course the efficiency went up to 23%. So on the module level, you have modules at lower cost, more efficient and bifacial. But of course, in order to reach low electricity costs, very important was also to uh, reduce the balance of system costs and tracking was also a big breakthrough. And uh, what we believe that actually going even below one cent per kilowatt hour is possible with new end type technology. And the case is then that you have less degrading material, you have lower temperature coefficient because of higher voltage and uh, the modules are getting more bifacial. And I believe when such bifacial modules will be state of the art in utility scale, then also more and more albedo enhancing uh, measures will be implemented. So on this slide, you can see how fast PERC was introduced into the PV market. The cost of ownership of a PERC cell reaching average efficiencies of 23% were around 10 cents per watt peak. Now it's going up because the very costly silicon. So an average still three cents per kilowatt hours in our systems are possible. Here you can see the uh, parameters of a typical PERC cell at 23%. So you can reach almost up to eight watt. And uh, PV tech research is having a quite aggressive uh, forecast for N-Type to come into the market. So it is starting now. And as we discussed before, it's about higher efficiency, higher bifaciality, lower temperature coefficient, and low degradation. And if you can uh, get the cost down close to, to PERC, then it will be also used on utility scale because you have then highest electricity production, so more kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak. And the most prominent N-type technologies, of course, these days are Topcon and Silicon Heterojunction. And uh, the next step will be to transform them into their IBC cells. So I'm showing this graph quite often just to show you that actually going uh, moving into NPV era is an evolution and not a revolution. So actually, you can see here from the Kermlek graph that every year about 6.0.6% uh, absolute inefficiency has been uh, gained to the uh, last year's efficiency. But of course, then also you have to switch technology at some point. So. Uh, aluminum back surface field is limited to about 
660 millivolt, and in order to reach 680 or 685 maximum, when you have good material and uh, selective emitters, then you have to change to PER because of a better rearsat passivation. And if you want to go above 700 millivolt, you have to go to N-type technologies with passivating contacts. Of course, you can also do passivating contacts on P-type, but this is a little bit more complicated. And that's why N-type is, is gaining uh, its momentum again, because PERC is coming to efficiency limits. And uh, all the advanced cell concepts are actually bifacial and based on a better surface passivation. I compare this very often to the mobile network. So 3G is obsolete, 4G uh, is already substituted with 5G, even in, if, in Germany now. There are many people having 5G. The question is, is it already now necessary or not? And uh, if we come to, to 6G and overcome the Auger or schottke quaisel limit, this is for me not quite sure when. I believe it will take a much longer time because it will be not an evolution, but actually already a revolution going to tandem solar cells. So on this slide, you can see the front and rear sides of each cell technologies we have discussed. So the front side for PERC, TOPCON, and yeah, silicon heterojunction or heterojunction technology is uh, the same. I've <laughs> taken the same picture. But uh, yes, there are no differences. The differences are on the rear side where you have aluminum still uh, for PERC, of course, is much cheaper, but gives you a lower uh, bifacial factor. Topcon is about 0 0.8 plus and heterojunction has a bifacial factor of 0 0.9 or uh, higher. And uh, the new bifacial solar cell out there is uh, our zebra that is produced by SBIC and has a bifacial factor of uh, very close to, to the perk, slightly higher because uh, you have silver, of course, on the rear side and you have double bus bars compared to uh, the other N-type technologies, of course, because you have to contact P plus and N plus on the rear side. If you look at the modules, then they look uh, the same, like um, half cut modules and uh, the efficiencies that you can reach with PERC is uh, are below 22%. I would say at the average, uh, it's between 21 and 21.5. Then you have TOPCON going already well above 22%, heterojunction as well. And with IBC technologies, you can go then also above 23%. So actually, the, um, all the modules out there, the situation is much more complicated because you have not only half cells, you still have full cells and you have shingled and you have different arrangements. But what is clear from this table, and excuse Michael that I'm showing this clean energy reviews table, but you can see the logos quite quickly and you can see that, that N-type is uh, in the top 10 all technologies out there are N-type. We have them also Jinko and, and, and Trina that will report later on. And uh, P-type technology, you have, then for example, JS Solar with 21.5. So PERC is limited below 22% and the N-type technologies are going above that. And here, for example, the only bifacial IBC technology so far is produced from SBIC, having now actually 21.3% efficiency. You see now in China that a lot of investments are uh, involved in TOPCON and heterojunction, so in N-type. And uh, there is some projection from PV InfoLink. Then in, uh, in 2025, we will have a capacity of uh, N-type more than 100 giga. And from that, TopCon has the largest portion. Here you can see the projection from International Technology Roadmap about 
bifacial cells. I believe it's it's more because now all the perk technologies out there are bifacial or, or most of them and all the n type technologies are bifacial. So here you see that 2021 90 gigawatt were produced and if we will enter a terawatt market between 28 and uh, 2031 so let's say 60 gigawatt will be bifacial then you can see here the bifacial um, um, backside of the bi bifacial technologies again so per Ketterer junction topcon and ibc and uh, this is a forecast about bifacial cells and bifacial cells can be actually also used in monofacial modules and still have an advantage this is for example what lg electronics was uh, using quite a long time so here you can see a monofacial cell in a monofacial module and you can see that actually only the front rays can reach the cells and then here the reflection uh, into the rear side is reflected again whereas for the uh, bifacial cells in a monofacial module you still have additional light and uh, especially in the morning or evening you have additional incidents which can increase your uh, power at the end to two to um four percent more but of course if you are going to to zero or in negative gap, then of course this advantage is is gone in the monofacial modules. But of course, bifacial cells are meant, meant for bifacial modules, and then you have also the advantage from from the rear side and uh, bifacial gains, or let's say at at the end the the energy yield can be from five percent to thirty percent more, depending also on the albedo enhancing measures and uh, installation geometry you are using for, for your system. So now let's come to bifacial applications and also now utility scale for n-type PV, which is fairly new. So there are uh, applications in mobility where of course it's quite clear from the beginning on that this is not very suited for bifacial applications, but there is, a, let's say, another possibility for electromobility, like uh, where you have installations like in a, in a carport, and we are very proud about this new electric ferry on Lake of Constance, where uh, bifacial IBC modules are used, and you can see that you can have an advantage also on, on a boat. So... This is a goal for bifacial. For rooftop applications in buildings or balcony, this is now a big trend in, in Germany to have balcony power stations that also the private households can help with energy transition. So of course for rooftops, it, it's not very useful, but for many balcony applications, you can have also the reflection from, from the rear side. So if you are putting modules not in front of the balcony, uh, you are just replacing the the balcony then with uh, the modules then by faciality is also very useful and then of course on flat roof white rooftop systems by faciality is uh, very interesting and uh, if you are enhancing the albedo by waiting uh, by painting the the roof white then you can have also a large bifacial advantage. So this is a, a go for bifaciality. And um, here you can see another picture. What is also quite new and that um, trackers can be also now installed on stable rooftop systems, but this is what companies are doing. And then bifaciality is of course also uh, quite interesting there. And you can have an additional enhancement with tracking and uh, by facial gain. This is a quite nice application used from uh, ZHAW, Solico, and another Norwegian company, uh, vertical installation on rooftops. So this is a go, but it's quite a niche market at the moment for building integration. 
you can have also bifacial cells and this gives you a quite nice opportunity also to uh, have a nice um, appearance but also bifaciality helps for energy enhancement for water people believe that water is a a very good application for that because uh, it's good reflecting and uh, uh, you have cooling, additional cooling. I would say at the moment, this is not very useful, even if you have like a uh, white uh, reflectors here, but the installation of water, the installation itself is extremely expensive. So you have to use the, the whole area and that's why it makes a lot of sense to put the modules very close together, like compare <laughs> on, on, on rooftop systems. And in addition, water is not such a good reflector. It absorbs quite well. So for floating systems, it's not used at the moment. But of course, I believe that in future, because glass glass is, is adventurous also on water and the, the cells will get bifacial anyhow. So bifaciality will be installed on water as well. Yes, and here you can see some, some nice application for agriculture use. And if you install vertically, then you have to have a very uh, high bifaciality. And that's why uh, Next to Sun is not using PERC, but uh, Jollywood modules here. And uh, there is another installation possibility for AgriPV, which will be actually very important in Germany, for example, or in Europe, because we have not so much space. So AgriPV will be a big uh, market and uh, bifaciality is very beneficial there. So it's a go. And of course, for large utility scale, you know this systems very well. Uh, horizontal single axis tracking with here modules from, from Jollywood. So uh, as I told you, N-type. Um, modules are moving into the utility scale market. I think also Jinko has such installations and uh, Trina as well. And uh, for that, it makes also a lot of sense because the modules are becoming more and more bifacial. So albedo enhancing measures are interesting. And here you have some, some foil application and uh, others are doing it uh, with uh, white sand or some white pebbles or uh, conquer or different different enhancing measures out there. So it's a goal. And uh, some history about bifaciality. So actually bifaciality started with N-type fixed tilt. And uh, the breakthrough was actually then when the uh, bifaciality came to uh, into PERC technology, then it was widely used, but I believe that in future it will be used uh, then um, in uh, that end type will be used also on, on utility scale. So as I told you from 2013, it was end type fixed tilt. Now P-type horizontal single axis tracking on large systems took over. And now more and more also end type is penetrating into the utility scale, mostly in regions, of course, when, where there is, uh, uh, in, in hot regions, where actually also the temperature coefficient is also beneficial, the low temperature coefficient, and also where you have already a good or a high uh, natural albedo. Yes, yeah, so NPV will be the next, uh, the new emperor of energy markets, we believe, the Topcon will become number one in the next five years. PERC will be still out there for a long time. IBC can dominate because uh, you still have the possibility to go to higher front side efficiencies, even if you are a little bit cannibalizing the, the rear side, but the front side still uh, matters the most. And Tandem will be important, I think, only in yeah, 10 to 12 years from now. Of course, there will be uh, tandem technologies out there, but really to come on with high impact will take a longer time. So the bifacial gains out there, there is a um, quite nice table from a publication from us in 2020, 
two where you can compare it to a standard, like to a fixed tilt, what by facial gains you have in different systems. And for example, if you see, if if you look at the horizontal singles axis tracking by facial system, then of course you have the the highest improvement using the um, 10 to 22 percent enhancement from horizontal single axis tracking on top you have also the the bifaciality gain yes and the bifacial gain by themselves actually depend on, on many factors as for example on the bifacial factor of the module uh, the installation geometry and of course on the albedo of the ground and it can vary from five to 30 percent if you are um, using for example albedo enhancing measures in a typical system as here in a horizontal single axis tracking system using bifacial perk in a desert with an albedo around 25 to 30 percent a typical bifacial gain is at 10 percent now coming to bifacial standards and I make an example here with our bifacial um, IVC module. We have measured the front side and measured the rear side and then uh, calculated the bifacial factor. And with the bifacial factor, you are actually then calculating the additional illumination you can use for the front side for the standard 100. And so you are illuminating the front side with additional 75 watts, so in total 1,075 watt, and are reaching then instead of 363, a power of above 390, or in case of uh, beefy 200, between uh, 400 and 220, so 417. And you actually could label this on the module and sell this additional advantage. But at the moment, as I see it, nobody, almost nobody is using it because let's say PERC is sold only by the front side power and there are very less, very few differences in PERC uh, rear side um, bifacial factor. And that's why in no perk producer is, is doing it. I believe that the, the N type producers with Topcon and, and Heterojunction will more and more do it because uh, then you can see immediately the, the bifacial advantage of the N type technology. Let us summarize then the bifacial applications out there for utility, rooftop, and integrated solutions. There are solutions for fixed tilt, vertical, and, and tracking. And uh, as I told you, bifacial gains can vary from 5 to 30%. And uh, if you use it in a bifacial mode or not, depends very much on your bifacial installation, how much modules you put in a row, and so on. So here, still a decision is, is made. Will I install bifacial modules or monofacial modules? In terms of tracking, I think this is a little bit different because you are putting the trackers anyhow in a, a larger distance and putting not so much modules on top also because of mechanical stability and wind loads. So to our understanding, it doesn't make too much sense anymore to put monofacial modules on a tracker. And certainly in... Uh, vertical installations, of course, you will use bifacial modules. And here, I think this is the only installation where really bifaciality also paid for, because uh, Nexusan is saying that uh, having very much bifacial modules pays off, because the front side uh, at one time also became uh, becomes the uh, rear side and, and vice versa. So here, the installers and uh, uh, system users are actually paying for bifaciality. 
My dream is that very soon PV will become impairer of energy markets with modules uh, with 23% efficiency with uh, temperature coefficient below 0.3% per uh, Kelvin with large bifacial factor, lower degradation. And of course, the modules, at least to my understanding, do not have to be uh, much cheaper than these days, maybe a little bit because the uh, polysilicon crisis will relax, but we don't have to go so much below 20 cents per watt peak and can reach very low LCOEs because of, of the very powerful modules. So what is already happening, as I told you, that uh, N-type modules are entering already the utility scale market, and this will go faster and faster. One example is the uh, Ibri 2 project from Jollywood, which is a very large project, and it was uh, installing N-type modules in hot region and uh, very high reflective region makes already a lot of sense. So now coming to the summary, PERC is definitely the king by facial PERC, and it will be out there for still a long time. And more one cent per kilowatt hour announcement will come also with PERC. Bifacial NPV will become the impera with top cone and heterojunction. We believe that the final step also for the utility scale is, is IVC. And there are some announcements now also from ICO and Longi that they are going this way. Bifacial standards and albedo enhancement will be used more and more with N-type technologies become the because the optimization will become more and more important. So thank you very much for, for listening and see you later. <laughs>